Good evening, Bitcoiners. Today is December 11th, 2017. My name is Sasha Hodder. I'm an attorney in Jacksonville, Florida, and I wanted to take this opportunity to discuss cryptocurrency and taxes. So a couple things on the agenda. First, the uh, United States versus Coinbase decision on November 29th and the implications resulting from that. Second, capital gains versus income tax, how it's treated. Third, the Crypto Tax Fairness Act. Fourth, altcoin transactions and the tax implications there. Fifth, the way that you can write off any trading losses you've incurred. Sixth, the mining tax and how that's treated. Seventh, LIFO versus FIFO versus specific identification. Eighth, foreign income tax. And lastly, we're going to go over how you can keep track of your transactions in order to pay your tax. So what happened with Coinbase was on November 2016, the IRS issued what was called a John Doe summons, looking for a significant amount of information about every individual user who had used Coinbase, which was um, over 5.9 million users, and there was over 6 billion in transactions done between 2013 and 2015. But get this, <laughs> only somewhere between 800 and 900 people, good, honest Americans, uh, reported any kind of crypto-related taxes on their tax returns. So the discrepancy between the 5.9 million known Bitcoin users and the 800, I think it was 812, that actually filed taxes was enough to cause the IRS to investigate. Um, so they sent Coinbase this summons looking for every information, every user's one complete profile that Coinbase had on them, two, all the know your customer due diligence information that Coinbase had collected, documents regarding third party access. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but I think it means third party access is the wallet. I hope that's not what it is, but I think. To me, that's what I think it is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments here. But I think they want your wallet information, your transaction log, record of all payments that were processed, um, you know, correspondence between Coinbase and its users, accounts and invoice statements, records of payments, any exceptions produced by Coinbase anti-money laundering software. So if you did a transaction over $10,000, they probably had to report it to FinCEN and uh, the IRS wanted that too. And your child, your house, uh, <laughs> they want everything. So Coinbase you know, thankfully fought back on this and said, no, that's a huge overreach. We're not giving you all that information. And as a result, it was a year long lawsuit. And in the end, the judge said that Coinbase had to turn over the information on any user who had over $20,000 worth of transactions. And turned out that was only 3% of the users, so it'll be a little over 14,000 Americans that will um, that their Coinbase information was given to the IRS. Now, what I find interesting here is that if Coinbase was given this John Doe summons, probably every other exchange was too. And the other exchanges probably just gave the information over instead of fighting it. Because fighting it was expensive for Coinbase and um, kind of painted them in a bad light. Like everyone's up in arms that Coinbase you know, had to do this, but they were ordered by the court. They fought it as hard as they could. I really like Coinbase as an exchange. They make it easy for people to transact in Bitcoin. They're the first company in America that I'm aware of that allows you to move money from, you know, they established a banking relationship and that was huge. And uh, they went ahead and got an the money transmission license in every state. They've complied with every law. They're, they have the FDIC insurance. They got the New York BitPay license. Like this is a company with some integrity here and uh, you know I'm a happy customer of theirs. I know the last week the price have been going up and down and all these new people are coming into this space and crapping all over Coinbase but um, you know they uh, I like them and I'm glad that they fought for us and uh, 
I'm glad that we know about this because now we know that all the other exchanges probably just gave our information over. So it's kind of a big deal if you don't pay your taxes on Bitcoin this year. So how is Bitcoin taxed? It's taxed as property. So IRS Order 2014-21 came out and said that Bitcoin was property, so it's not... Um, it's a convertible virtual currency. It's not a real currency that you know is legal tender because that's reserved for only created by governments. So it's property taxed as capital gains if you hold it over three years. It's taxed as income if you sell it under a year. So you take your purchase price minus the sale price. Look at the two dates. If they're more than 12 months apart, then you're in capital gain zone, which is going to be a 15% tax rate unless your income is higher than 418000 and then your tax rate bumps up on capital gains to 20%. If you're selling it shorter than a year, uh, it's it just is income tax, and that's taxed at your regular income tax level, and it just gets added. The gain only um, gets added to your income for that year. So... Quickly, the income tax rates, if you uh, earn 9000 9 9.3, you're paying 15%, so you're still at the same as the capital gains. If your income is 37950 your tax rate goes to 25% on your income tax. If you're earning 91900 you're at 28%. If you're earning 191650 uh, you're earning you're paying 33%. 416700 you're at 35%. So I can't get over looking at these. I'm from Canada, and our income tax rates are way higher than this. And um, this is good. I don't, you know, compared to Canada, Europe, Australia, Americans have good tax rates. And, geez, based on all the Reddit comments I've been reading, y'all sure hate paying them. <laughs> I don't blame you. That's part of why I moved here. And, uh, but I just did want to mention my old boss, who I really looked up to, he told me once, if you're paying taxes, it means you made money. Whatever investment you had, it was your friend, and you need to be grateful for it. And just keep that attitude of gratitude rather than that attitude of, you know, I'm being stolen from. And it makes it a lot easier to pay. And it's, you know, death and taxes. There's something you can't really avoid. You can't legally avoid them anyway. So let me keep in mind. Now, calling Bitcoin property, it did make sense, in my opinion anyway, I think it makes sense for holding it as an investment. But what about if you're buying your coffee with Bitcoin? Or, you know, as we get more and more involved with this crypto space, people will be on buying their groceries, everything with crypto. I never want to, you know, remember that story of the Bitcoin pizza guy at the very early days. But anyway, it's something that with mass adoption of crypto, we need something to figure out how to do the taxes because right now the, the way we're supposed to do it is every time we buy a copy, we get a pen out, calculate the Bitcoin price today at that moment, and then go back and look, oh, what what was the last coin? What coin am I selling? What's the difference? That's my capital gain. Let me report that to the tax man. Silly. Um, you wouldn't have to do that if it was regular currency. So they're coming out with this crypto uh, crypto tax fairness act, and I really hope it's passed. I hope it's passed by this tax season. It's government, so don't keep your fingers crossed. But it would make any transaction under six hundred dollars de minimis, and we wouldn't have to pay tax on it. So uh, if you ever see anything come around online or something to petition for that act to be passed, definitely it's a great act. So let's try and get it passed. Okay, and now for altcoins, how they're taxed. The exact same way, and they are taxed. Uh, lots of people somewhere down the line in the Bitcoin community, it became common thinking that once you convert it into crypto, you never have to pay tax until you convert it back to fiat. That's not true. I thought it was too until I started doing a bit of research just to write this little blog article last week and uh, I came across, you know, 
there's a lot of misinformation about it there. Like there were several videos, several blogs saying that that's how you do it. But if you read how the IRS classifies virtual currency, they don't say anything about whether it's Bitcoin or altcoin. They call it any convertible virtual currency. So my definition of Ethereum is that it's a convertible virtual currency just like Bitcoin is, just like Litecoin is, but they're not the same convertible virtual currency. So anytime you sell Bitcoin and buy Litecoin, that's the end of that Bitcoin's tax event and it's a new tax event. When you go into Litecoin, you establish that cost basis. When you sell it, that's the price you're calculating and the time frame you're calculating to figure out whether you're paying the capital gain or the uh, or if it's just getting added to your income. You sell out a Litecoin, you go into Monero, same thing. You got a new taxable event. Each buy and sale is a taxable event. Um, so some people say that it's all a like kind exchange. That would mean I think they're referring to the 1031 exchange, which is reserved only for real estate and certainly has to be reported on your tax return when you're doing that. So it's basically you can roll one house into the next house and keep the cost basis from the first house so you don't have a taxable event when you buy the second house. That doesn't apply to the stock market. If you buy stock in Under Armour and then sell it and buy stock in um, Lululemon, you're going to have a taxable event each time. And I think that's what the Bitcoin you know, trading is most similar to the stock market, not the real estate market. So, uh, and you know, we have 812 people recording taxes. So these people that are saying out there saying, oh, these are like kind exchanges. Chances are they never recorded their taxes and didn't, you know, count it as a like kind exchange on the tax form. So be very wary um, about that. And I think every single trade you make in the exchanges is a taxable event. But keep in mind, if that Crypto Tax Fairness Act gets passed, any trading you're doing under $600 would be de minimis. So if you can keep your trading activities to small amounts and just do them over and over, I think you get around the tax on those. Um, also, you can write off your trading losses. So if it's a short-term loss that you had on one coin, like say you lost money like I did in September on NEO, and then you made a bunch of money the last couple weeks on IOTA, they're separate events. So say you made 6,000 in IOTA, but you lost uh, 6,000 in NEO, that would be a wash. You wouldn't have to pay any tax there. But say you made 10,000 in IOTA and you lost 5,000 on NEO, um, you'd only have to pay, so you can only write off 3,000 at a time. So you could take 3,000 of your NEO loss, apply it against your 5,000 IOTA gain, and then you're only paying tax income tax, if it's short term, on the 2000 of the IOTA. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Um, and then you still have another 2000 on your NEO losses that you can carry forward to next year. So uh, that's you know a little silver lining if you're losing money ever in the altcoin game. Um, don't feel bad. It happens to everyone. I think anyway. It certainly happens to me, but then there'll be good, good days too. So mining is supposed to be counted as income. So the second the coins are created off the blockchain, that is a tax, you know, a taxable event. It's income in your pocket, in your wallet, um, and you're supposed to convert it over to American dollars value at the day that the coins are mined and then record that on your income tax. And same thing if you're getting paid in Bitcoin, you're supposed to add that into your income tax as well. Um, so now what about LIFO, FIFO, uh, specific identification? Well, the great thing about Bitcoin and taxes is there's not one case precedent for us to look at to get any information from. All we have is that 2014-21 um, guidance. So. There, if you were to do specific identification or any other kind, you know, the IRS likes FIFO, first in, first out. So your first Bitcoin you bought is the first one you sold. 
that it, it, I think it makes sense. But if you're really trying to get crafty with it or you have some huge tax gains that you don't want to record this year, corporate accountants use a thing called specific identification. So they point to the asset that they're selling. So you could technically look at, you know, coins that you bought just a little over 12 months ago so that it's you know still a capital gain and not income and say that coin the 700th coin I bought <laughs> I wish I bought 700 coins <laughs> but uh, but you could identify that coin as the coin that you just sold if you're trying to minimize your capital gain so um, that's one way to do it but like I said they prefer the you know typically on a stock purchase, which is what I think we're getting a lot of our guidance from on Bitcoin, is uh, first in, first out. You can't do the specific identification with stocks, but if you're a corporation, you can do it. So right now we don't have anything to go off on Bitcoin, so I think we probably could do it, but just to, to make it the easiest way, you know, the way that you know they want it done is FIFO, first in, first out. And then uh, a lot of people have been making comments that you could sell your Bitcoin in other countries to avoid paying tax and that's not true either because the American government has this you know foreign like you're supposed to report all income you make whether you make it in foreign countries or not and add it into your income and it will affect what tax bracket you're in and then you pay tax on income you made anywhere if you're an American citizen living in America. Um, some people say you can get around doing this like get around the tax by say moving your money from Coinbase or whatever wallet you're using, uh, Mycelium put it from there into Binance or any other exchange that's overseas not governed by America um, or you could use a VPN to get it over there too and then sell it into the only thing I think is hard is how do you get it out of the exchange into dollars um, you'd have to like go over there do a local Bitcoin deal or you know anything on the exchange I think is fair game for the IRS so um, and like I just explained, anything that's done anywhere is considered um, it's considered income in America or foreign income tax or foreign capital gains tax. So whatever the IRS can see, they can tax. And um, if you haven't kept track of this, <laughs> join the club. I don't think anyone, you know, I'm sure there's some people that have kept great track of it. But for me, it's going to be a bit of a... Um, it's a bit of a mess to capture every transaction I've ever done. Um, I haven't paid tax on it yet. A little disclosure, I've paid Canadian tax the last three years. So this is my first year. I've been living here for, for almost, well, three and a half years. So I'm not doing anything criminal by not paying my tra my Bitcoin tax yet. But, but if I don't pay them this year, it will be probably an issue. So... I'm gonna. Um, I looked into getting. There's two apps that I've heard that are pretty good: CoinTracker.info and um, Bitcoin.tax. I'm just. A, I didn't like the idea of giving my API key over to this Bitcoin. I had. I didn't try CoinTracker.info and then Bitcoin.tax. I just got freaked out by all the information they needed and that they'd be able to see. So I, um, I'm doing mine on a spreadsheet. All you do with your, you know, Coinbase, it's really easy. Like you can see what you move from your bank or into your bank. Like that, they, they even make it into a spreadsheet for you. I'm sure they're soon going to have a way to populate TurboTax with that stuff. But when you get into the altcoin ones, um, or I know I used to be at, at a conference once, I used Bitcoin to buy a mug from someone's kid that was selling them or... I think that's the only time I bought an actual like thing with Bitcoin um, other than trading it. But I'm glad I didn't spend much more than that. I choose that mug probably costs you know a thousand bucks now or more. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm gonna do it on a spreadsheet as best I can because I don't trust these you know tracking information but they're out there if you do trust them and uh, if you have a Trezor I think that'll pull out a spreadsheet for you of every one of your transactions and stuff like that too so there are ways to track it um, it's still 
technically on the honor system. Like they have 14,000 or 3% of Coinbase's users, and we don't know that they've got every other exchange. But, um, you know, like I said, tax evasion is not something I'm interested in being charged for or even audited. So I'm going to do my very best to get every transaction accounted for and be glad that it's all capital gains and not capital losses this year. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, thank you.